Hello everyone, greetings to one and all. In today's episode of our debugging series, we are going to look into the breakpoints concepts which is very vital and critical in our debugging journey. So what is a breakpoint? A breakpoint is an explicit placeholder that's placed on the program where we expect the program flow to get halted so that we can decode, debug, troubleshoot any issues based upon the business scenario. This breakpoints plays a vital role in improvising our debugging techniques. And consider a complex program where it has many thousands lines of code. Going through each code will be very arduous job. It, it will be a very tedious job. So this breakpoint is basically the checkpoints that's present to help us, to aid us in our debugging journey. In today's session, I'll be discussing and showing you about three different breakpoints and how the breakpoints, a uh, debugger breakpoint gets converted into a session breakpoint. I'll explain that. And then I'll also show you the practical use case wherein you can only place only 30 breakpoints per session. I'll show all this in my hands-on demo. Now let's directly jump on to the hands-on part. So if you have gone through my previous videos, I would have explained to you about the debugger tool and the function keys F5, F6, F7, F8 using the same program. I'm going to use the same program, right? And as you know, placing a breakpoint is nothing but double clicking on any line. As soon as I double click on any line, you will get a message that session breakpoint was set. Now, what is a session breakpoint and why it is called as a session breakpoint? The reason why it's called a session breakpoint is the life cycle of this breakpoint is only until the session exists. So if I close this session or if when I say session, all the different screens that I open in my session is called, which belong to the same session. So unless I log off from the system, my entire execution, my entire operation that I do is in a single session. So when I log off, my session gets completed as well. So when I log off and log in again, these breakpoints, these session breakpoints will not exist. That's the reason they call it as a session breakpoint. And the session breakpoint is with respect to the same program or even with respect to the other program also. Like you can open multiple sessions during your same login, you can open multiple uh, screens and in the same session, you can open multiple screens and you can place breakpoints on different programs. All of them are considered as session breakpoints. Okay. Now, I'm go before I get into the debugger tool, I'm going to explain another concept called external breakpoint. Now, how do you place a breakpoint here? You go here more and you place set and delete session breakpoint. There is another concept called external breakpoint. You see just next to that. So when I try to place an external breakpoint, you see I get a message breakpoint was set for external debugging system wide user is SAP support, which is my login user ID and it is valid only for two hours. Now, what is the external breakpoint? Whenever any external application, be it a Fiori or any other external application consumes my code in the back end, right? And it consumes my code and executes this logic and shows the results in the front end. This is where our code is being used by an external application. For these scenarios, if you want to troubleshoot any issues or decode something, or if you want to understand the program flow, I can set the external breakpoint. So whenever you set an external breakpoint, by default, your same login user ID gets assigned. But that is not the case in a regular scenario because most of the times your external user can be different than the backend user. Because for you to check the program or for you to decode or troubleshoot the issue, you will be the backend developer but the front end user who reports will be different. So in that case, with that user, when he tries to access our application, our program will be having our user ID as the external breakpoint. So how the program is going to halt. So it's simple. You can go to more, you can go to utilities, settings. So here in the ABAP editor under debugging tab, you can change the user ID of the external user. Now, for example, I'm placing the external user breakpoint. The external user is test123. I continue it. Immediately it says, user SAP support already has external breakpoint. Do you want to keep them active for this user? So I'm replacing SAP support external breakpoint with this user breakpoint. So immediately I get a message that test123 is the new external breakpoint set and the validity is again reset to two hours. So what is the life cycle of it? Only two hours. So that's why since the Breakpoint is set for the external application process. We call it as an external breakpoint. Okay. Now, without wasting any time, I'll execute this program. And as since I have placed uh, a session breakpoint and an external breakpoint, my debugger tool gets triggered. 
Now, if I go to breakpoints and watchpoints tab, I can see the log of the breakpoints that are set. So, external breakpoint is set and the session, I mean, the session breakpoint is set as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting. Now, whenever I place a breakpoint here, you see there is a difference between all these three breakpoints. So, this breakpoint is called the session breakpoint, which does not have uh, any icon, just it has some a red, a red circle inside it has written a session breakpoint, some content. Here you see in the external session breakpoint, you have an icon, correct, user icon. So, which means that it is an external user's breakpoint, okay. Here if you see, I have something, the content is written in black. Even the icon, there is a difference between these three, right? So, what is this breakpoint that I have just set? Because even in debugger session, I can place breakpoints like this. So, since I have placed this breakpoint in the debugger, this breakpoint will be called as a debugger breakpoint. As soon as I place the breakpoint, my breakpoints tab will get updated with that, right? So, you see here, this is called as a debugger breakpoint. Now, the one disadvantage of having a debugger breakpoint is when I complete the execution, and I come back and I execute again, my debugger breakpoint will not exist. Okay. So, whenever you want your debugger breakpoint to exist even during the next run or during the complete session, you just need to place the debugger breakpoint and use the save option where save debugger breakpoint as session breakpoint button is there. Click on that, your debugger breakpoint gets changed into the session breakpoint. Now, check on the breakpoint watchpoints tab. You can see you have now two session breakpoints, zero debugger breakpoint and one external breakpoint. Now, if you have noticed in my previous cycle, even though this is an external breakpoint, it still stops. The program still halts at that external breakpoint line because it is still a breakpoint in the program. Even though it is set for a different user, it is still a breakpoint for the program. Henceforth, it stops there. Whereas when the external user tries to uh, access this particular program, it will not stop on the session breakpoints because it is for my ID and moreover, this is not the point where it is expected to stop. It will only first stop at this line number 20. After this line, whatever breakpoint that you place, for example, I am placing at line number 24, right? It will again get stopped there as well when you are accessing via an external application. But it will not stop on those breakpoints that are that are session breakpoints and are placed before the external breakpoints. It will never halt. Unfortunately, I will not be able to show this uh, use case here. Probably in my subsequent future videos, I will try to show you an example. For now, I hope you understand the difference between a session breakpoint, a debugger breakpoint and the external breakpoint. Right? Now, let's try something interesting. Now, let me complete this execution. Okay? And I will come back to the screen. Now I'm going to open another program, which is a standard program, and I'm going to start placing some breakpoints here. Okay. These are all going to be a session breakpoints because I'm placing it on a different window, but on the same session. Okay. So now let me keep on placing breakpoints. I already have few breakpoints there, right? So let me keep on placing some breakpoints and let's try to understand what is the maximum extent to which I can place breakpoints. Okay. So, I still keep placing the breakpoints here and I'll keep breakpoints, breakpoints here, here, here. I hope we reach the threshold soon. Yeah. As soon as I come here, it says that you cannot set more than 30 breakpoints. So, this proves our theory that you cannot set more than 30 breakpoints. Even though the breakpoints are set in a different program, still collectively as a session, you have placed more than 30 breakpoints. So, that's the reason it is not allowing to you for creating more than 30 breakpoints. Now, I'll show you something interesting here. There are going to be certain scenarios where we would have placed breakpoints in different programs, but during our debugger session, we will not be able to find out uh, like unless we don't have this debugger tool, it will be very difficult for us to find out where the breakpoints are. Now, in spite of whichever program you are trying to debug and whatever program logic you are in, when you go to this breakpoints tab, it will still show you all the breakpoints that are placed as part of this session. So, this is the program where I place the breakpoints. You see, it displays all the programs that I have placed the breakpoint, right? So, with this, we can identify what are all the breakpoints that we have placed in any other programs as well. And we can choose 
to we can select breakpoints from here and we can delete it and then save it which means that the breakpoints whatever we have placed there gets deleted as well okay now for example i am choosing the line number 12 here rv hg 80 gen okay i am deleting it and i am saving it again now if i go to this program for now in line number 12 there will be this breakpoint now if i go back and if i come in again this line number 12 will not have that breakpoint because i have deleted it in my debugger session right now in debugger session let me try to keep some breakpoints okay let me try to keep some breakpoints so here i'll try to keep some breakpoints you see i was able to create two breakpoints but because i have deleted two breakpoints now when i try to place the next breakpoint it says you can only create 30 breakpoints so irrespective of the type of breakpoint whether it is a session breakpoint or a debugger breakpoint you can only create 30 breakpoints across the session but one good thing is your program will not stop for all the 30 breakpoints because not all of them belong to this particular program flow henceforth when you complete the execution it will only stop on those places where you have placed the breakpoint and it will complete the execution okay so with this i hope you are clear with the different types of breakpoints the understanding and the life cycle of the different breakpoints session breakpoints with respect to the session once you close the session and come back all the session breakpoints will not be there external breakpoints can be set for you or any other external user who access or consumes your code from the front end and its validity is only 2 hours third one is a debugger breakpoint which can exist only during your debugging life cycle once your debugger tool is off and you have moved to your main screen the debugger breakpoints will go in order to hold the debugger breakpoints you need to press control s or save the debugger breakpoints so that your debugger breakpoints gets converted into session breakpoints right and you can keep only a maximum of 30 breakpoints across all the programs that you are consuming or you are using per session this 30 is the count with respect to a single session okay hope all these concepts would have given you a good understanding about the breakpoints and the different types that we use in our debugger tool in our next session i'll be diving deep into the debugger tool and other facilities wherein we'll be discussing about uh, different ways of placing breakpoints in the debugger tool and other features of debugger tool thank you for your time and i hope to see you all soon in my next video thank you peace and blessings to you all